You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linder, your host. And this time for the fall, we have a special candidates edition, mayor, city councilor at large, city council, and school committee. I have with me in studio, city councilor at large, Bob Sullivan. Good hey, to Mark. see you. Good to How see you? you. Good. Thank you for the invitation An to join you today. Another campaign. Okay, this, yes. is, this is going into... This will be, I've, I've been elected six times. I've mm -hmm. served 12 years, so I'm going into my seventh city election. And, uh, of course, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, to be supported by all seven wards, all 28 precincts, to serve the whole city as a councilor at large. And this year I'm the city council president, and I've had the honor by my colleagues to serve two other years as the city council president. So it's, uh, it's exciting. It's a really exciting time relative to an election. Although for Councilor at Large, as you know, Mark, uh, we won't have a primary or a preliminary, they call it. It's nonpartisan. We're going right to the general, which is November 7th this year. Gives you a little more time to breathe, but you're still working at the same time. Absolutely. Your council is in summer session right now. It'll That's go right. into September and it'll be, you know, it's still summer session in September. And then you go back full force That's right. in October. That's right. Every Monday so night. do you still like it? I love it. I love it. I mean, um, you know, you and I have chatted about this before. Um, you know, I, I serve everybody because I want to try to make a difference. I believe I have made a difference over 12 years. And that's why I'm running for re-election, Mark, quite honestly. I mean, I have a young family, uh, three children under the age of 10. And uh, so it's a great sacrifice uh, from, from their quality of lifetime. But um, Brockton's home. It always has been home. My in-laws, my parents, my wife, all here in Brockton, and we're fortunate for that. And I'm trying to just work to, uh, to better all that live and work in the city of Champions, city of Brockton. Well, city council at large is citywide. That's it's right. Just one ward. You deal with all aspects of the city. Things that are coming up on the agenda, uh, still talking about it, different, different uh, points on it, but desal. Right, right now, there's a proposal. The mayor would like to buy the desal plant for is it seventy four million? Seventy four. Million. Okay. Right. That numbers changed yes. over, over the years. Yes. What's your take on I'm that? I'm against that. Quite honestly, Mark, I've been upfront about that. I uh, I think we're in the people business, meaning uh, we represent the taxpayers, the constituents that we serve. We're not in the water business. Um, to spend that kind of money is crazy. It's not valued at that. It's not worth that. Uh, and at the end of the day, if you look at Aquaria that owns it right now, they've had one customer over the years of operation, the city of Brockton. No other city or town, municipality is interested in hooking up. It's too expensive. To buy it at that price makes no sense. It doesn't make fiscal sense. doesn't really make common sense. Um, so I'm against that. I, I think when you buy something, first of all, it has to be the right price. But also remember, when you buy it, the good and the bad. So then you own all the pipe to the origination point. The infrastructure repairs, liability insurance, and more importantly, the people that are going to run it, they would become employees of the city of Brockton. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm against it. I filed a resolve with my colleague, Wynn Farwell, um, to have the MWRA, um, Mass Water Resources Association come, Authority, come before us. Uh, they're coming at the next uh, finance committee of the city of Brockton. We need to talk through this process. We need to see what other options do we have. Of course, the aquaria was mandated. A secondary source of water was mandated by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for the city of Brockton. Um, so we need to figure out what are the next steps. Uh, to spend this kind of money, taxpayer money, my money, your money, makes no sense. We're forced that we need this secondary source, but we need to figure out what's the next step because the contract expires in 2028. Now, MWRA, back in the day when they were talking desal, was a dirty word. It was a, it was a four-letter word, okay, <laughs> basically. You're right. And now it seems to be a, an option to be able to explore, okay? Is it, is it still as expensive as it was back in the day? There yeah. were people, you said those four letters and people were like, Picket signs. Yeah, I mean, that's like if you look at how much computers used to cost when they first came, or even microwave, yeah. everything's come down over time. But the good benefit about the MWRA, and I'm not saying it's going to come to fruition, I'm not saying the city of Brockton's going to hook in, um, but it's at a neighboring community, Stoughton, uh, that's where the resource would be hooked into. So we need to do our due, due, due diligence. I've said it many times. We need to kind of go through the steps and process. But um, the proposal by Mayor Carpenter right now, I'm only one of 11 on the city council, but I am opposed to that outright. Okay, so issues you're hearing of, the, the, the blue, green, and white signs are going up. They I are. I see them going around the city. So you're out talking to people. I you're am. out shaking hands. You've got your nomination signatures. What are people saying of the issues this election? What are you hearing? Well, Is it different? I, I think it's, it's year to year, and of course we run every two years, and it's a nonpartisan. So if you're a Democrat, Republican, unenrolled, independent, you can go to the polls. Again, I'm on the ballot November 7th. Um, the issues are always the same. You want a safe community. You want a clean community. 
um, people are just trying to get by from a fiscal standpoint. Um, how are you as a city councilor at large making a difference in my day-to-day -day life? And I can talk about my experience and my proven leadership, Mark, and, and I stand on my record. Um, but I've always gone to bat for the senior citizens in Brockton, the veterans in Brockton. I've drafted ordinances that protect them relative to volunteering to cut down and reducing their real estate taxes. Um, I've also championed zoning where we have downtown businesses that are now coming because I had the city council. And again, I've championed it, but my colleagues have bought into it and supported it. We're a collaborative, uh, a really, group, a uh, legislative branch of, of the form of government. But, you know, without 40-hour smart growth zoning that I championed, you wouldn't have Vincente's down here. You wouldn't have the $30 million Trinity Financial Project downtown. Um, but one of the most um, really proud things I am is relative to the streetlight acquisition. And I've talked about it, Mark, and you know about this. I was banging the drum for a few years uh, with the previous mayor and this mayor to say, listen, we need to buy the streetlights from National Grid. We purchased them for $42,000. Mm -hmm. Of course, our budget's over $400 million, so it was just a little small fraction. We saved $550,000 year one, $600,000 year two. These are reoccurring savings that really are significant money that are making a difference. That money is saved. We can put it in more fire, more teachers, more police, re road repairs. So it's reality. Um, but people just want to have a community that they feel like it's home and it's a safe community. And of course, the media um, doesn't necessarily always favor Brockton. There's always the bad thing. We have a great public school system, Mark. You're a product, I'm a product. Mm -hmm. It's really a treasure that we Good have. Good teachers, too. <laughs> oh, my father was there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Retired. But, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, when I'm knocking on doors, and I'm still doing that, that's what you need to do. Um, when I knock on your door and say, will you consider voting or re-electing me, it's because I'm trying to make a difference. And you want to know what have I done? I mean, I have something to stand on. Um, but this is a good, diverse group of people running right now. We're going to have great conversation. I know you and, and, and the staff here at BCA TV are going to be working to, to really educate the voters. Mm -hmm. um, I always say, if you have any questions, suggestions, even criticisms, give me a call. Uh, my cell phone, 508-846-1208, 508-846-1208. My website is being updated right now to be revised. I've been endorsed by different unions. The Firefighters 144 have endorsed me um, proudly, and I, and I really appreciate that. The Sprinkler Fitters 550 have endorsed me. Um, Plymouth Bristol Central Labor Council has endorsed me. And I only mention this, Mark, is because these groups and the members that live in the city of Brockton, um, they really take their time to figure out who is the candidate to support. And, and I've been proudly endorsed many times, but I just got these endorsements. So um, www.electrobertsullivan.com is the website. It is being revised right now. Um, but again, that's what it's about to serve. It's a public servant serving the public of Brockton. You mentioned seniors. One of your colleagues on the council, Councilor Farwell, made a proposal a little while ago about the senior center. Okay? Yes. Everybody's all over the senior center all the time, especially at election time. What do you think of that proposal? I, 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 it, it went out there, went in the media. I'm not sure about all the comments, okay? Yes. Seems like an interesting idea. You got a council on aging. It's a nice building now, yes. but it's small. That's right. And they, they had, and Janice Fitzgerald and her staff down there, um, are, they do yeoman's work. Um, we wouldn't be here without the seniors. They're the generation. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, we carry on what they taught us to the next generation, my children and then grandchildren. Um, I think we need to take care of that. That building, the Mary Cruz uh, Kennedy Center, is an awesome building. Uh, it was state-of-the-art when it was built. It needs to be expanded. They were thinking about doing an extension campaign, raising money to build it out. Um, Wynn Farwell, former mayor, Councilor Lodge, my colleague, my friend, um, said, why don't we look at the Shaw Center? Why don't we consider that? I jumped on board. Dennis Ianeri in Ward 3 jumped on board. You have to figure out does that make sense? Um, from a financial standpoint, I don't know. There needs to be a lot of money put into that for repairs and up to date. Uh, it's been a, really an asset owned by the city of Brockton that's in tough repair, tough shape right now. And I've said this many times as a council president, as a council at large, you have to put money into things, right? You put money into your house um, to maintain it. We need to make sure that our city assets, such as the Shaw Center, uh, is really up to speed, and it hasn't been for years. So I don't know if that will come to fruition. I support wholeheartedly console and aging, always have, always will. And uh, I think we need to really kind of dig in to figure out what is the next next location, or is it the location currently that needs to be expanded. It will come to fruition, Mark, however it plays out. Well, I, I want to make sure there's room for me when I get close. I'm, I'm <laughs> you and me birthday both. coming up next week. <laughs> anyway, um, what about education? Okay, recently in the paper, finally, we're hearing 
actual talk about actually filing that lawsuit. That's right. This is where it all started, Ground Zero in Brockton. Started out as Webby Robin versus Webby. Board of Education, right. then it was Hancock, and then, then it was McDuffie. That's right. I don't know who the new lead plaintiff is yeah. going to be, but you're a, you're a lawyer. Do you I think am. we have to go down this path? I think we should. I think mm -hmm. we should because, uh, as you said, we've had precedent. Uh, it was f dis decided in our favor. Um, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and I'll be blunt about this, they do not treat Brockton fairly. We don't get fair reimbursement on our transportation costs. We don't even get our fair lottery share. Mm -hmm. So relative to our public schools, again, the students and the teachers, that's an asset. We're not just recognized in the Commonwealth, we're recognized nationally. You look at number of graduates, where they're going on to post-education. If they're going into the military and service, that's great, but also if you're looking at where else are they going. Um, and we have people this year going to Ivy League schools. Um, we have the Abigail and John Adams scholarships, the highest in the Commonwealth right now. Um, again, I'm a son of a retired Brockton teacher, a current um, a sister is a current teacher here in the system. I think we need to, as a lawyer, we need to say, listen, there's precedent. We're not being treated fairly. Let's go back to the table. Let's go back to the judicial system and say, listen, this shows that Brockton won this case, and now we need to make sure it's being adhered to, and it is not. So I support it wholeheartedly. I've said it to Kathy Smith, our superintendent, and Mike Thomas, the assistant superintendent. Let, let's go. Let's get it going. Whatever we need to do. We've put money aside from a financial budget standpoint to, to at least have some legal fees uh, in the hook when we move forward, and we're going to have some other cities and towns uh, jumping on board as well. Got the three-minute queue. I want to give you two yes. minutes. So you can talk directly to the voters. Absolutely. Forget about me yeah, for the no. moment. Tell them why Bob Sullivan should be reelected. Well, first of all, I want to thank you, Mark, and BCAT for having me here. Again, my name is Bob Sullivan. I'm sure um, we've met <laughs> during my 12 years in the city council, but I'm a proud uh, Brocktonian um, and Brockton's home. When many of my friends uh, got out of college, they didn't come back to the city of Champions. I did. I chose to, raising my sons and my daughter here in the city of Brockton with my wife. Um, I love to be a counselor at large. I love to be a public servant. I love to represent you. I've said it before. I think experience is truly needed during tough economic times. You need someone that's going to think outside the box and someone that's just going to stand up for what's right. One thing about me is what you see is what you get. Um, and again, I grew up in Ward 2 on Wellington Street. My wife grew up in Ward 1 and, and we're here, home. So no matter if I win or lose, I'm still here. And I'm hoping to win again November 7th. You can vote for four councils at large. I'm asking for one vote to put me back in for the next two years. I want to work with you. I want to work for you. Again, it's Robert Sullivan, Councilor at Large. I will be number three on the ballot in November. And call me, 508-846-1208. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And if you want to sign, give me a call. We're putting them up, as Mark said. Um, this is going to be a very difficult campaign, and I urge you to please listen to all the candidates and listen to what they have to say. It's so important for the present, but more importantly, the future of the City of Champions, the City of Brockton. And I thank you for your consideration. Well, thank you for coming in. We'll Thanks, have Mark. you more. We're hoping to do a, a debate as we Absolutely. get closer to the I election. Love those. So everybody can meet the candidates, talk the issues. I'm kind of a little disappointed selfishly because I like a preliminary election. I do too. Not with 16 or 15 like no. we had before, but nine would have made it. So, I, I like it. I like a preliminary. You know, it, I think it makes it gives, everybody stronger. makes you stronger. You get the issues out and you can really work on the issues and see who is a valid candidate. So November 7th, but uh, that's what we have. And, and thank you again for your time. Thank you. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host. Stay tuned for more candidates for mayor, councilor at large, city council, and school committee right on Brockton Community Access. You can watch all the government meetings on Government 12 and all the school sports on Channel 98 and all the public events on Channel 9. So stay tuned, but make sure you educate yourself, do your civic duty, and go out and vote. Otherwise, don't complain. Thanks for joining us.